This might be the most Scottish guitar you've ever seen, with its tartan elements, whiskey barrel wood, and other decorative appointments. But getting to a fully functional, one-of-a-kind instrument such as this takes a lot of work and careful planning, especially when you don't have the proper tools or dedicated workspace. Join me in this journey of creation where I take the raw materials and transform them into something special, rising up to meet the challenge in a competition where the odds were very much stacked against me. I was invited to build a guitar as part of the Great Guitar Build-Off, a competition aiming to inspire and share the passion for guitar building and luthiery while also auctioning off the completed instrument for charity. I've been known to dabble in guitar maintenance and modification, but it's been a good few years since I last tried building a whole guitar from blocks of wood. Now, however, I live in a one-bedroom, first-floor apartment, so no outdoor workspace, no big boy power tools and not much room to move around. I'll be building this guitar in my living room, which is also my recording studio. Looking down the list of the other YouTube competitors, it's clear that I'm at a significant disadvantage. All of these people are professional woodworkers with fully kitted out workshops. Band saws, router tables, industrial planing equipment, the works. And here am I, sat with a set of blunt chisels, a saw rasp, and a shugly excuse for a workbench being held together with clamps. It's hopeless! I can't build something as grand as these people, I thought, leaving behind the uncut crimson kit to more the instrument it would never become. But perhaps I didn't need to build something that pushed the boundaries of technical ability. Perhaps all I needed was a strong theme and a good narrative. As I sat down that evening in my kilt, poured myself a wee whiskey and settled in to enjoy my haggis dinner to the relaxing sound of bagpipe music, I thought to myself, what about me is unique that nobody else is gonna do? And that's when it hit me. I'll do a tartan guitar. A guitartan, if you will. But what shape to make it? Without all the power tools and CAD programs and CNC routers, complex curves and sweeping shapes would be out with my ability. I'd need a simpler shape with more straight lines that could be worked with basic hand tools. As I glanced across my palace of guitar decadence, two of my most prized possessions caught my eye. My gothic flying V, kitted out with the raddest brass hardware known to man, and my Hornby 00 scale model railway diorama featuring the flying Scotsman. It can't be a coincidence, thought I, contemplating the shared adjective of these two beloved items. A guitartan V would indeed be a flying Scotsman. The first thought that came to my head was a flying V wearing a kilt, and as funny as that would have been, it's hardly practical. Besides, I didn't fancy doing all the carving work required to make this a true Scotsman. Chicks Grivers help my boob! No, the plan is to make a more practical instrument with a strong Scottish theming, an aesthetic of tartan and whiskey. I might not be able to make the most technically challenging instrument in this competition, but I sure as hell can make the most Scottish one. It's time for a wee dram as we break out the whiskey barrel top. This cask end will make a perfect guitar top once we get the slats separated, planed down to thickness and arranged on the instrument. This might be the best smelling guitar ever made. Slajava. This is tartan, a patterned wool fabric strongly associated with Scotland. Historically, clans wore their own tartan with colours and patterns to distinguish them from other families. This is my clan tartan, Scott Green Ancient, and it's the same tartan my kilt is made from, although a little lighter weight for this application. With so many colours and lines, this could easily look very busy, so it's important to keep the tartan for highlight sections only and make the general finish a flatter, non-imposing colour, leaving the tartan to stand out. I'm thinking of using this for elements like the pit guard, truss cover, and a little bit behind the pickup cover. There is also the fly plate, a large square of tartan folded in a specific way and pinned to the shoulder of the jacket. Perhaps I could incorporate this into the guitar strap and have the guitar complete my Highland outfit. Tartan alone does not Scottish national dress make. There are other decorative items required to complete the look. Kilt pins are a decorative element used to highlight the edge of the kilt and they come in many different designs and materials. I've chosen to match the pin with the one on my kilt. A pewter claymore with the Scott clan crest. A mighty stag and the motto Amo, which means I love. And I can tell you, I love how this is turning out. 
Another item synonymous with kilts is the skiing do. That literally translates as black knife, or black in this context means something hidden or secret, concealed in shadow. These were originally concealed weapons worn under the armpit, easily accessible if conflict broke out, but in the modern day there are more elaborate decorative items worn on display in the sock. However, a guitar with a concealed knife would probably cause some issues upon shipping the instrument, so instead we've got the next best thing. This is one of my heraldry pickups called the Ski and Do, a black blade humbucker in a small single coil sized package. This is the guitar's secret weapon to a ripping lead tone and consistent volume across the widest bends. These are my favourite neck pickups and I just love winding these things. The Bridge Humbucker is another one of my heraldry designs named after a Scottish weapon. The Claymore, a formidable two-handed greatsword wielded by the warriors of medieval Scotland. With a powerful Alnico 8 magnet and a twin rail design, this is the most powerful humbucker I wind, capable of cleaving through a dense mix, and Englishmen alike. Right, that's enough contemplation, time to get to work. And the only problem is, I've never used a hand plane before. I don't even know how to sharpen the blade, and my workbench is so shugly it's going to fight me every step of the way. This is going to be a long and arduous journey to success, and there's only one thing that can get me through. Iron Brew. And perhaps an 80s training montage. As we approach the completion of this build, there are a few other design details I'd like to point out. It's not only the guitar top that's made out of a whiskey barrel, the fretboard inlays are too. Usually on a guitar the side dots and the fret top inlays are two separate pieces, but I thought we could be a wee bit more economical with this one and make it out of the one piece. These are simply a slot cut in the fretboard with a saw, and then a piece of whiskey barrel glued in and whittled down flush. I'm mixing modern and traditional design elements with this build. The silhouette is largely classic flying V, but with modern minimalist comfort carves achieved using an angled router bit. The neck heel carve is a very grand example of this, which will no doubt divide opinion, but it achieves its purpose of easy, unrestricted fret access and does so in a visually striking way. The neck is held to the body with machine screws mating into threaded brass inserts, making a very solid connection. The neck and and socket from the crimson kit were a very tight fit to begin with, giving us optimal vibrational transfer between neck and body. The pit guard and plates were all cut by hand using a jeweler's saw, and the shapes refined with files and sandpaper. The tartan is sandwiched between layers of black nylon backing and a thin aluminium frame. Securing them to the guitar was also done with machine screws and threaded inserts because I like to be a little classy. I've installed strap locks, ensuring this guitar will never fall off of its strap. Locking tuners facilitate quicker string changes and improve the tuning stability. These are Goto Magnum Lock 510s, best of gear. 
Individual milled brass saddles are used for a bridge, a necessity for the multi-scale nature of the instrument. The bass side has a scale length of 27 inches, while the treble side is a more traditional 25.5 inch scale length. This is going to perform remarkably well at low tunings, and bar chords are going to be so much easier. The electronics are all high quality CTS potentiometers and switchcraft toggle switch and output jack, an orange drop capacitor and some classy pushback cloth wiring. All of this was very kindly supplied by Allegri.co.uk. The three walnut knobs with the Celtic knots engraved on top were all made for me by Indra Guitars, who did all of the brass parts for my gothic Flying V. I just love the stuff they do. Links will be in the description for both of those companies. All of this excess tartan has a purpose. This very kind woman assisted preparing the material on her ancient sewing machine. Where would a boy be without his mammy? This has allowed me to free the edges and when folded in a specific manner, pinned to the guitar strap with strap locks installed when worn. This takes on the appearance of the shoulder plate. This is no longer just an instrument. This is an extension of my Highland outfit. Before we move on with the build, I want to talk about the real reason that I and the other Invitational YouTubers are involved in this at all. The Great Guitar Build-Off was originally established as a fun way to bring attention to the art of guitar building while also raising money for charity. The guitar that I and the other YouTubers build will be soon auctioned off for charity. What this means is you'll be able to get your hands on my guitar while also knowing that there's the additional benefit of your money going to help people who are less fortunate. The money made from the sale of the guitar will be split between two charities. My chosen charity and the Great Guitar Build-Offs charity which aims to help less fortunate luthiers with subsidised tools, training and guitar kits. Helping people to experience the joy of guitar building who perhaps otherwise wouldn't due to health, finance or situation. The charity I've chosen to support is Simon Community Scotland, whose mission statement is everyone deserves a safe place to live and access to the support they need. They work with people who are homeless, rough sleeping and people, particularly young people, who are at risk of finding themselves in these difficult situations. There are myriad complicated reasons why people find themselves homeless. From the breakdown of a marriage, to the death of family, health issues, a less fortunate start in life or poor life decisions, but regardless of the reasons that led there, no one should be homeless. No one deserves to be in that situation and it's the failing of a caring society not to help these people. Simon Community assists in finding accommodation both short and long term, but goes beyond this in helping people achieve the skills required to hold down work, make payments on time and the support for a happier, healthier life. They have a long list of services and initiatives that are helping people all over Scotland turn their lives around. So that's where your money will be going when the guitar is auctioned off between the 1st and 11th of June on the Great Guitar Build Off site. But I know many of you out there will want to support my chosen charity without bidding on a guitar, which is is why I've set up a Just Giving page where all your donations will go directly to Simon Community Scotland. Both of those links will be in the description. Let's go over there and raise as much money for them as we possibly can. Here is the completed guitartan, and what a beautiful beastie she is. A body of solid sapili with a whiskey barrel cap, stained in what I like to call whiskey burst finish. The multi-scale neck is also sapili with an ebony fretboard and whiskey barrel inlays. For electronics we have a twin humbucker configuration, a full size blade claymore in the bridge and a single coil sized ski and do in the neck. From a decorative standpoint we have custom made pickguard and plates featuring the Scott clan tartan, a kilt pin and some bespoke knobs. And to complete the look, a tartan guitar strap which mimics the shoulder plate of a Highland outfit. Ultimately I built my perfect guitar, one that I would want to play all the time that integrates with my look and heritage. Every feature included here is top quality, spared no expense and is exactly as I would have it. This is one of a kind, the only one in existence and there'll never be another like it. I'm certainly not building another one, but I'm not keeping it. This is a beauty that should be shared with the world. This could be yours. All that's left for you now is to hear how it sounds.
This guitar will very soon be up for auction at the Great Guitar Build Off site. That auction will run between the 1st and the 11th of June, so if you want to get your hands on this unique instrument, you've got to be quick. This one means a lot to me and I'll be sad to see it go, but hopefully it will raise a lot of money for charity. Remember, if you don't want to bid on this guitar, you can instead donate to my chosen charity, Simon Community Scotland, at the link in the description. Let's make them the real winners of this competition by raising as much money for charity as we possibly can. Monia Mikkel Maxa Muckle. Remember to click all the buttons you're supposed to for the algorithm and share this one everywhere you can. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay Scottish. Right, let's get this jig cracked. Mm. It's a booby.